Hello, my name is Steve, and this is my racing game development log. We're currently on number 31. So what I've been focused on for the past week is mostly optimization and preparing the scene and some assets for for just scaling the scene up a little bit. Um, and I'm just going to talk about the process that I went through, some of the tools that I used, and see if that helps you guys. Um, so the first thing that I did was I, I went through and I used the frame debugger so I would run the game and you could go to window analysis frame debugger and that's what this window is over here and when you press play you can actually step through all of the frames and you can see what each draw call consists of and basically gives you a lot of insight into how your objects are being rendered. Um, and by doing that, I was able to identify some issues and kind of like move content into place, um, setting up certain contact content as instanced or static, um, fixing any issues that were preventing batching or instancing. And that, that was the main goal with the frame debugger. After that, I, I started using the resource checker. This is available on the asset store, it's free. Um, so you load up your scene and you hit the calculate button and what it does is it shows you your texture usage, material usage, and mesh usage, and it also gives you some, some high level overview of what the values of the content in your scene are. So for example, I have 64 textures at 84 megabytes, 42 materials and 799 meshes with 244,000 verts in the scene right now. So when I started focusing on optimization, I had 218 textures and that was brought down to 64. And those took up 273 megabytes and that was brought down to 84. Um, so big improvement for texture usage. And most of that was just actually taking the time to figure out what textures are being used. Um, and, and also that aligned with the materials. Right now there's 42 materials being used. Initially there was 201. So reusing some materials and textures on various objects that helped bring those values down and then just optimizing all of the settings on the textures. So you might notice that this window has a bunch of buttons which is pretty cool. So if I if I want to see what this GSD Railing 7 Normal is using, um, I'll click on it and I could check out the, the values and I'm not actually crunching this texture yet so I haven't gone through and and optimized all of the textures I just did a first pass at the the highest offending textures um, I started organizing some of the assets and just bringing them into a final folder location um, when I started this project I probably pulled let's see you could see on the left side how many different folders are in this project and for the most part each of those folders is a different asset so when I started I just took a bunch of content brought it into the project brought it into the scene and as I realize what I'm using then I start moving that content to a dedicated folder I have this underscore game folder at the top um, that's basically going to be where all of the actual content that gets optimized and final versions go um, but yeah so so I use resource checker to ping the to basically ping the let me leave that open so I could ping the different references and, and see what their settings are make some adjustments and then I could also ping the materials that are using these textures and also I could, so if, if I want to find out which objects are using the road crossing, I, I just select that and then those four objects are automatically selected and I could take a closer look at each of them. And that's pretty much how that works. I, I just go through and I actually look at the details for all of the content that I've created. Because what I did was I used a bunch of procedural tools to create all of this. I used the procedural city generator, the seascape system, um, 
there's not really much optimization I need to make there. Um, and then I used the road architect for the procedural road system. I went through and I finalized all of those roads. So if we take a look at that, let's find the roads. So, so I don't have road architect in the scene anymore. Um, this is the final version of the scene. So only final meshes are here. When I want to create more roads, I'll bring road architect back into the scene to create the roads that I need. Like once I go to this side of the island, that's, that's the plan there. And again, by the time I get to this side of the island, all of this side, all of the meshes and all of the content in it will be finalized. It'll be optimized and I'll have developed a workflow that will help me set up this side of the island a little quicker. Um, because I know what the final result will look like. So there's just less ambiguity in that regard. Um, also with road architect, there, a lot of these, so like there, there is a secondary object. So it uses, that's the one thing that I don't really love about road architect is it needs two objects for each road piece. Um, it basically overlays another piece of geometry on top and that's how you get the the road markings. Um, it would be really cool if they just went together, but at the same time, I, I get it. So, um, aside from those road markings, I, I feel like it's pretty optimized at this point. Um, the other thing that I did for optimization was I, I, I was using a tool called Auto Fence Builder from the Asset Store. And what that did was it, I actually have that other scene. Um, so as I go through these scenes and make different changes, I back up a scene. So I'll like I'll duplicate it and then I'll create the, the first version. And I, I still have references to all of those assets basically. And so even though I removed Road Architect from the scene, um, from the actual primary open world art scene, this core scene still has road architect in it. So if for some reason I need to come in and fix something, I, I can do that. But I'm pretty sure at this point that it's all fixed up the way that it needs to be now. Um, so here in the scene, let me go ahead and click on one of these fences. So I'm, I'm going to call them fences, but they're walls. Um, I don't know why I keep calling it fence, maybe because I used auto fence builder to make these. So, so this was the geometry that auto fence builder was giving me. Um, it basically procedurally places these based on the nodes that you lay out. And then what you end up getting is just a bunch of objects that are placed next to each other, which is cool. Um, cause you could create content really quickly, but if I were to combine these, there's a lot of extra faces and just, I, I don't feel like, like there's a front face and back face. So if I combined all of these, each block is going to have a lot of extra faces that it doesn't need to have. Um, and all of the fences were built that way. So I had, let's see if we calculate the scene, what the scene is looking like. takes longer to calculate because there's more content in it. But I have a feeling I'm still going to have thousands of meshes here as opposed to the 734 that were found on the last lookup. Yeah, so here there's 7,900 meshes. Most of these meshes were from this auto fence builder. Um, so let's go back to that. open world. So what I ended up doing to, as an alternative to auto fence builder was I found, um, a couple piece core pieces of fence that I wanted to build. And I, I basically extruded the mesh along a spline. I used dream tech splines to do that. And so here's an example. Um, I basically just so all of these splines are 
or all of these meshes are just far more optimized. So this is a huge long wall and it, it's only 252 verts, whereas the equivalent wall with auto fence builder was probably three times the size. Um, so I went through and I created, it, it took me 41 objects to create these fences. And yeah, so, so I finalized the fences. They're now just more optimized. Um, finalized the roads. I removed duplicate or I removed unnecessary materials from the scene. Cause like I said, the roads all for the most part, each piece of road had about four materials. Now it only has two materials, which is the, the actual road markings and the asphalt material. Um, yeah, so that's, that's basically what I've gone through, um, over the last few days or the last week. And I did do one more thing. So I, I found, so the, the vehicles I'm using for the AI cars are the traffic cars are from a pack from the asset store and they come with a texture atlas. So each of these vehicles, what I did was I combined all of the meshes. So these will be parked cars. So each of these vehicles has the body and the wheels combined and all of the vehicles in this folder are using texture atlas one and all of the vehicles in this folder are using texture atlas two. So combined I have, let's see, let's find out. I think I have about 50 different vehicles altogether. Yeah. 55. Um, so that's going to allow me to, to throw some parked cars in all of the different parking lots and add some variety and some customization to them. Um, there's different types of utility vehicles, um, like some trailers, different types of cabs, got a fire truck, an ambulance, um, some buses, which those would be cool to help make the Ferris wheel area look a little bit more built up. Um, got some of these gas tanker trucks, um, some semi truck type thing. And yeah, um, I, I feel like I have enough vehicles to scatter throughout the city as static props. Those will never move. So they're all set up. I just, um, it, it took me about a day to maybe not even a day, maybe just a couple hours to, to go through and combine all of these at, I think it took about two or three hours to combine all of these assets and just, just prepare them for what I'm going to use them for. Um, so the next step will probably be to fill up some parking lots using those static vehicles. And yeah, that's, that's about it. I do have a build set up. Let's go ahead and check that out. So all in all, what I think I, I gained about 10 frames per second with my test setup. Um, I still haven't put in an options menu so I could turn down the quality settings. So right now quality settings are at max, but previously this starting area was like 70 something frames or 60 something frames. Now I'm in the most part seventies, high sixties. Uh, sometimes it would dip in the fifties, but I haven't seen it dip into the fifties for a while. Um, but I also haven't driven around the entire city. One of the things that I've done is I've, I've played with Cinemachine a little bit more. So you might notice there's some, some camera, the, the camera is basically doing some stuff on its own, which is kind of cool while you're at high speed, um, makes it a little bit more interesting. It's still not done tying that in yet. So the old gas station or gas pumps are gone. I, I modeled this with pro builder. I don't love it. I'm not an artist, but it is optimized. It's a single object using just one material. So previously the old gas pumps, the, the little stations were multiple 
objects with multiple materials and they just had high vert counts. So switching them out for these at least makes it look better. Well, I, I wouldn't say it makes it look better. I didn't like the style of the the overhang, the roof part of the gas pump and station. It's, this one looks a little bit more modern, more normal. Um, so in, in that regard, I like it a little bit better. But as far as the overall texture quality, yeah, like, yeah, this is just flat and doesn't look great. Um, let's go check out the Ferris wheel. Oh, we can also, I, I have to play with some stuff because I am noticing some flickering on some of these new walls. I think those are the only objects that are flickering now. Um, previously the terrain was flickering. I fixed that and I was getting some flickering when I was going up these ramps, like right around here, the lights would actually go through this wall. So I changed the bias setting for the headlights. Maybe I just need to do the same thing for the AI vehicles. Um, I actually have street lights on this highway now, which is cool because um, there were street lights here before. They just, they did not actually have the, the volume light on it or actual lights that cast shadows. It was just a light. Um, so now we, we have our lighting set up on the highway system. And I definitely like the black asphalt on the highway better. I just need to go through and fix some UV issues with them. Um, yeah. So all of this area is just so much better. I'm in the seventies. Um, as far as frame rate goes, even jump into 80 mid eighties, I I've seen it jump into 90 at some points, um, which makes me really happy because once I set up the quality settings, if I, if I turn down the graphics a bunch, the game's probably going to run really fast, like no shadows. It'll probably make it run probably at least at 90. So th this uh, Ferris wheel, I had to optimize a good amount too. I found a free Ferris wheel on the asset store. And yeah, e each of those cars had about 25 objects on it. So it's not final optimization level, but at least it's not as expensive as it was before. I really like the shadows that the Ferris wheel is producing. So we got the shadows on the ground and they go over the car. Um, it's an interesting area. Um, once there is some more, uh, I'll put some buses over here parked in this parking lot and a bunch of cars. I'll make, I'll build this up area up and it'll look pretty cool. But at, at that point, yeah, that's basically what I've been working on is just getting ready to add more content to the scene, figuring out what I have, organizing it, optimizing it, and just really trying to get the frame rate to a good point. Right here, I notice I just dipped into 59. So I will, I'll still have to play with some of this a little bit. Um, I have a feeling though, it's just because from where I'm at, my, my vantage point, I'm just able to see everything. So maybe I could do some more efficient occlusion culling, maybe put up a few more buildings or something to block some content. But at this point, yeah, I'm, I'm going to wrap it up. Um, thanks for checking it out. Let me know what you think and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.